Hey everybody, Brian Boyle here, and welcome back to episode 68 of The Mesh Tongue. It's Thursday, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little tired. It's towards the end of the week, but, uh, but I'm all smiles here, and hopefully, uh, hopefully you're having a great day, and uh, you know, you are, uh, you're getting some good training in, some good base training, if, uh, if nothing else. We, uh, we're getting geared up for the weekend. If you've got a long run, uh, comment below and let me know what, uh, what you're doing, how, that, uh, how that's going. Uh, you know, again, a couple weeks till Boston, so it's, uh, it's getting close for all you that are running Boston. So Today I want to give you a couple updates. Uh, that, uh, that damn Nike Vapor fly, that, uh, that shoe that I was talking about, they're going to take that mesh tongue away, and I'm not real happy about that. I noticed that yesterday afterwards, and I was like, where the hell's the tongue? They have designed it so it fits like a sock, so no more, uh, no more mesh tongue. But, uh, but that's neither here nor there. We'll, uh, we'll keep it going on here. I talked to you a couple weeks ago about the Wim Hof breathing exercises, and I don't know if anybody's followed along and has been doing this, but I wanted to give you a brief update on the, uh, the Wim Hof, and that'll lead into today's segment, which is, uh, which is some breathing techniques. But the Wim Hof, uh, you know, as, as I'd mentioned in previous episodes, kind of an interesting thing, and I, I don't know that I was so sold on this. Um, you know, to, to be honest with you, I had no you know experience with it, and went into it with an open mind, saying, "I'll try it. We'll see what goes on." I've been chronicling how I've been doing. I started off where I could do 41 push-ups, uh, you know. I, with taking breaths, uh, you know, before uh, the first day I did the Wim Hof, I held my breath, did 40 push-ups. Second time, uh, I did uh, I did another kind of trial, and I got up to 50 push-ups. On the third time, which was two weeks ago, I got up to 55 push-ups. And uh, on this last attempt, which was two nights ago, uh, I got up over 60 push-ups, uh, you know, while holding my breath and, uh, you know, at the end of these breathing exercises. So. I'm not sure what to tell you about that. I, I'm, I'm thinking that's a pretty good sign. Uh, at the age of uh, 17, I remember not being able to, able to do 20 push-ups. Now I'm doing 60 plus push-ups with, uh, and I'd have to take a look, but I think it was, I think it was 60, um, I wanna say 65, but I don't wanna lie and exaggerate. So I'll say 60, if it was 65, I'll give you another update. But uh, um, I know the other one was 55, and, and uh, to be quite honest with you, that. Uh, uh, you know, you do get a little lightheaded. So when I wrote it down, I was counting, um, but you forget it afterwards. And so, 60 something, okay, push-ups on, you know, holding my breath. So, kind of interesting. And I'm noticing that I'm able to hold my breath longer. Um, you know, again, how does that relate to training? Well, we'll find out. We'll see how uh, see how things go when uh, we start doing some races uh, uh, later on this year. But. Today I want to talk to you about breathing. So, we all know breathing and, you know, breathe in, breathe out. But I want to talk to you specifically about belly breathing. And is anybody out there doing this? Is anybody using their, uh, their abdominals to breathe rather than the, uh, the neck muscles, the scalenes? You know, we kind of breathe like this, and we're, you know, raising the shoulders and doing one of this, okay? Um, talking about expanding. And contracting so we see this in singers okay anybody that's a professional singer knows that you belly breathe the reason why is that it opens the diaphragm up how many of you are out there doing belly breathing while you're running you know again by expanding the stomach contents in the abdomen allowing the diaphragm and the rib cage to expand and open up you actually allow more air into the bottom of the lungs that air then in theory should allow more oxygenation of the blood into the body uh, in theory again you should be able to go longer in your uh, in your runs with uh, with less fatigue um, you know, again, it's going to be variant based on the fact of how long you've been trying it. You know, are you actually taking in full belly breaths while you're running versus the short, shallow gasping for air breaths? And that's a good question. Uh, if you're not currently doing this, what I would do is I'd recommend that you lay down, okay? And you can try this. And the reason why I brought this up is the Wim Hof breathing. That's exactly how I do. I noticed that. You know, I do a lot of belly breathing, uh, and then I've, you know, obviously when I'm running, I do the same. But uh, some of these things you just you, you get so used to doing that you almost forget that not everybody knows this stuff. So, the belly breathing for sure. Uh, I like doing this with breathing exercises, laying down, and allowing the entire diaphragm to expand. So you literally push the stomach contents out as you take the deep breath in, and then all the way in, and you contract the abdominals. Breathe in, 
out, okay? And you're forcing that air down into the diaphragm. So you have to focus on that. If you're not used to it, it's gonna feel very strange. You're gonna feel almost uh, unusual. And, and you gotta get to the point where it's no longer a something that you're conscious of. You gotta get to the point where that's how you just breathe. You know, these nice deep breaths, expanding the stomach, okay? And you're focusing on your running and your training. So let me know how, uh, how you know, you, uh, if you're doing any of this belly breathing, what your thoughts are, uh, if you've seen a difference between when you went back to your old way of breathing through the, the neck muscles and through here or the short, shallow breaths, and when you tried the belly breathing, leave those comments. This is how we all learn. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you get some value from this. I'll tell you about this Wim Hof exercises later. Nike, don't go getting rid of that mesh tongue. And you other shoe manufacturers don't do the same, all right? We need, the, we need that mesh tongue on the shoe. But uh, this is Brian Boyle. This is episode 68 of The Mesh Tongue. Don't forget to check out runpainless.com. Hey, send emails to brian, B-R-I-A-N, at company5k. That's 5k.com. I'll be happy to uh, get back to you. I've been getting some emails uh, um, you know, more frequently, so that's awesome. So keep it up. I encourage you to send those my way, and uh, we'll get back to you as well uh, as soon as possible. Share this with your friends, your family, your training partners, but whatever you do, don't go hurting yourself to come back. I'll see you again tomorrow, Friday. Today's Thursday, episode 68. Take care.